Welcome back everyone. Today I am going to discuss CT brain approach and checklist. A basic approach we can follow before interpreting CT brain. Look at the brain tissue, calvarium, orbits, PNS, CVJ and hidden areas. Initially a topogram is acquired to plan the axial sections. Topogram gives lot of information. In case of trauma such as the cervical spine, gross fractures, cella, bony calvarium, presence of pneumocephalus or air lucencies and mandibular fractures. Coming to axial sections of CT brain, look at the grey and white matter. The grey matter is usually slightly hyperdense than white matter and the grey matter you can see the cortical grey matter and the grey matter nucleus that is the bilateral lentiform nuclei and caudate nuclei. The lentiform nucleus consists of the globus pallidus and the putamen. Look at them, both of them should be symmetrical and should be of same density. If there is any difference, there is some pathology. So try to look at the density differences in these structures and look at the grey and white matter and the grey white matter junction which, may, which might be effaced in early cases of hyperacute infarcts. And Sagittal images reconstruction is of very much important nowadays with the advent of MDCTs. Uh, the sagittal planes and coronal planes are must. You can clearly see the corpus callosum. Look at the corpus callosum whether there is any thinning or the pericallosal lipomas are usually missed on axial planes. And look at the foramen magnum, the cerebellar tonsils, cervical medullary junction, and the foramen magnum whether there is any crowding. And and the same thing in the bone window mid sag look at the cella and the clivus for lytic lesions or the metastasis or the chondrosarcoma or cardiomas and atlantoaxial or atlantodental interval. So these are the two planes which are of very much important and coming to hidden areas which is the most important thing in case of traumas. There are three common blind spots which is usually overlooked while scrolling the brain, brain sections that is the basic frontal lobes look at the basic frontal lobes the basic temporal regions as well as the high parietal frontoparietal convexities so any edh or sdh or few small hemorrhagic contusions in these regions are usually overlooked so these are the important areas to be looked for in case of ct brain especially in case of trauma and bone window is very important look at the orbits, orbital walls, temporal bones and lamina paparacea, fractures are usually common and look for the herniation or entrapment of the extraocular muscles and look at the sutures carefully and which should not be confused with the fractures and we usually miss sometimes with the fracture which is very close to the suture which is we should be careful and scrolling is very important which plays an important role close to the suture the fractures are usually missed and the temporal bones look at the temporal bones the, whether the fracture is present or not if it is present look at whether it is longitudinal or a transverse fracture if it is in the longitudinal axis of the temporal bone it is called as longitudinal and it's perpendicular it is called as transverse fracture and see whether it is involving the ossicles or not or involving the otic capsule or not and look at the mastoids whether they are hyperneumatized or hemomastoid is present or absent and next coming to orbits look at the globes presence of lens lens dislocation is present or not posterior chamber look for the hemorrhage retinal detachment and choroidal detachments look at the optic nerve and the apex of the orbit which is very important in case of trauma entrapment or the fracture fragment can impinge on the optic nerve and look at the extraocular muscles, their bulk and always compare with the both orbits. Coming to paranasal sciences, the pterygoid plates, fracture of pterygoid plates is very common and sinus opacification, hemomastoid, hemosinus might be present and look at the bilateral ethmoid and sphenoid sinuses. And the most important thing is the temporomandibular joints, look whether the condyles are within the TM joint fossa or not and 3D also helps very much based on whether these condyles are in position or not. 
and it also gives information about the coronoid process and the mandibular condyl condylar fractures and 3d imaging or 3d surface rendering display is very important to identify the fractures sometimes the small frontal osteomas or few lytic lesions can be picked up which is usually sometimes missed on the axial scrolling of ct brain so we need to utilize this 3d surface display of the calvarium uh, which is of very important so final reporting checklist look at the brain the cerebral parenchyma basal ganglia corpus callosum midline falls tentorium sulcal spaces and hypertense look for the hypertense vessels in case of hyper acute strokes ventricles and coming to calvarium look at the sutures beware of axillary sutures which can be confused with the fractures cella and the clivus look for the scalp lesions very commonly encountered are the subcutaneous lipomas pilomachicomas dermatitis and hematomas paranasal sinuses orbits craniovertebral junction atlas oronteral process and clivus and bilateral tm joints and more important is the beware of partial volume and beam hardening artifacts thank you very much